Here's what's going to happen. This hellish leader is going to come on the scene and everybody, as they are already today, are going to be hungering after someone who can make peace in the Middle East. Remember now, we know why that's so critical, because 60% of the oil reserves are there in that area. If somebody doesn't solve that problem, the world as we know it today could be shut down overnight. Yeah. One day, this charismatic personality will walk on the scene and he, say, he will say, I have the answer to the problems of the Middle East. And he will make a covenant with Israel on behalf of all the nations. The Bible predicts that worldwide chaos and instability and disorder will continue to increase as we approach the end of the age. Jesus himself said that there would be wars and rumors of wars and famines and earthquakes and pestilences in various places. Just before these conditions explode into world chaos, the rapture of the church is going to take place. And as we already learned, perhaps as many as 30 million people will suddenly disappear just from our nation alone. I started preaching almost 40 years ago. And from the very beginning, I've always preached the prophetic sections of the Bible. Frankly, if you choose not to do that, you won't preach much of the Bible because a great deal of the Bible is prophetic in nature. When these things happen, they will set the stage for a new world leader who will be able to negotiate world peace and promise to deliver security this leader will emerge out of the newly formed European Union and in the Bible he is commonly referred to as the Antichrist. It says that when he comes on the scene he originates his journey from the abyss, from the bottomless pit. Revelation 11, 7 says, when they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them. Where does the Antichrist come from? Ladies and gentlemen, he comes from hell. He comes from hell. He comes from the bottomless pit, from the place of punishment that God has created for Satan and his angels. Now, the Bible does not tell us who the Antichrist is. In fact, we are told by Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that the coming world ruler will not be revealed until after the rapture of the church. So if you come to the place where you think you know who he is, you have been left behind. In the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation are some incredible words. If you have your Bibles, you can read them with me. If you don't, you can read them on the screen. But notice, first of all, Revelation 13, 5. And he was given a mouth. And he was given authority. And verse 7. And it was granted to him to make war with the saints 
and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Ladies and gentlemen, who gave him the authority? Almighty God. Let me just tell you something I know about the Antichrist. He's on a leash. He's on a leash. The, dragon the other end of the leash the is the hand of Almighty God. God hasn't given up. He hasn't forgotten. He hasn't looked up one day and said, well, I guess the Antichrist has taken over. I guess there's nothing I can do about that. No, everything that he does on planet Earth, he does under the sovereign permission of God. God doesn't enable him to do it. He gives him permission to do it. Do you remember when Satan wanted to tempt Job? He came to God and he had to get permission to do what he did. I'm telling you that today because as we look around at this and we read these scriptures, we think, oh my goodness, it's all over. God has lost control and the world's gone crazy and there's no hope. Oh, there's hope. We know who's in control. Almighty God is in control. And Antichrist, as evil as he is, will never be able to step outside of the boundaries God creates for him. And one other thing to remember, wow. if I've got my theology right, we're going to be in heaven. You ain't got your theology right. We're going to be in heaven when this happens. In the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation are some incredible words. If you have your Bibles, you can read them with me. If you don't, you can read them on the screen. But notice, first of all, Revelation 13, 5. And he was given a mouth. And he was given authority. And verse 7. And it was granted to him to make war with the saints. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Ladies and gentlemen, who gave him the authority? Almighty God. Ladies and gentlemen, who gave him the authority? Almighty God. And then the Antichrist, immediately after that, according to the scripture, is killed. I believe he's shot in the head. Everybody thinks he's dead. But by the power of Satan, in an attempt to counterfeit the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he comes back from the dead. Can you imagine that? I hope you caught the element of timing I mentioned in today's message. The Antichrist will make his meteoric rise to power as soon as the Church of Jesus Christ has been removed from the earth at the rapture. If you do not want to be on planet earth when the Antichrist rules, then there's only one way to escape. Only true believers in Christ will be removed from the earth at the rapture, and you'll be taken to heaven with Christ before the Antichrist begins his reign of terror on this earth. I don't know his name, but I know a lot about him. Why would you cut off your wrist? Because I'm not cooperating with the states. They have no authority over me. To they have no authority over me. To They have no authority over me to speak. They have no authority over me to speak.